That hour has come close. The hour is nigh. Judgment is near. The reckoning of man has come near. The hour is close. And everyone is accountable for his own deeds. The Rasul said, how can I relax? And the owner of the trumpet, the custodian of the trumpet has lifted it to his mouth. And he has put the focus of his hearing, focused, attentive. When will the Lord decree that I blow the trumpet? When the trumpet is blown, whatever's in the heavens and earth will be destroyed. For verily the tremor, the shaking, the vibration, the quake of that hour is a big thing. The creation changes, the mountains fly about, the earth is destroyed, buildings come crumbling down. Everything that you know is an utter ruin, the most catastrophic day in the existence of creation. And this is the first blow. And this is called the blow of destruction. So although the Ahl al-Ilm mentioned the hadith, but it isn't the strongest of a hadith, but nonetheless, great scholars have mentioned it. And they narrate the story where in the creation, nothing is left except for what Allah wishes. So they say this refers to the four grand angels. These angels are Israfil, Mikael, Jibril, the angel of death, and the angels that hold up the throne of Allah. And Allah will tell the angel of death, take the soul of Israfi. Then take the soul of Mikael. Then take the soul of Jibreel. And Allah will order the angel of death to take the souls of the angels that hold up the throne of Allah. And Allah will ask, who is left? And the angel of death will say, me, Ya Allah, and you, and you are the one that does not die. And in a narration, Allah will tell the angel of death, go and take your own soul. And the angel of death will go to a land between the heavens and the earth. And he will take his own soul in a scene, brothers and sisters, that's described that from the scream that the angel of death will produce, if the people of the world were alive, they would have died again in shock. And that the angel of death would say, if I knew death was so painful, I would have been more merciful on the souls of the believers. And then Allah will ask, who is left? But no one will answer. Who is left? But no one will answer. There is nothing in existence. Allah Rabbul Izza grabs the earth and scrolls up the heavens in his right. Shaking it says, I am the king. Where are the arrogant ones? Where are the proud ones? Where are the haughty ones? I am the king. Where are the kings of this world? To whom belongs the dominion today? Who is the owner of the heavens and earth today? To Allah, the Lord of honor and grandeur. There's nothing but Allah. This is how it started. This is how it will end. Nothing alive except Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And then after a period of 40. Allah Rabbul Izza sends down water. This water is like a sticky, gooey substance. And through it and from it, Allah Rabbul Izza remakes the bodies of men, of the humans, under the grave, under the soil. It seeps through. And the hadith of the Prophet from the last bone on your spinal column. For every human, that's what remains. Science says so. 
From that Allah Rabbul Izza remakes you. Or does Israfil come up again, Israfil? So the blower of the trumpet is resurrected. He comes up. And then he tells him, blow again. And he blows again. They standing up and looking. When the earth goes into shaking and brings out the heavy burden it was carrying, as in the bodies of the billions that have come and went, and they get resurrected, the land is a different land. The ground is white. How are they resurrected? The Prophet says, barefooted, naked, uncircumcised. Sa'isha said, radiallahu anha, Ya Rasulullah, we are naked. The men will be naked. One day look at each other. So the Rasul said, Ya Aisha, the situation is much bigger than for people to look at each other. And as they come out of their graves, there is darkness. And you see some people, light surrounds them. Towards their right and in front of them, is lit bright and Ibn Mas'ud says your light will depend on the amount of deeds you have put forth some people will come with huge light and some people's light will be enough just for themselves and some people like a candle that turns on and off like it some people are resurrected and they can't get up those that eat the money of river they won't be able to stand you will see another person and kids are poking him and pushing him. He ate their money, their wealth, they were orphans and he wronged them. And this is their situation in the day of judgment. The sun comes a mile away from the heads of humankind and they start to sweat. So some stand in puddles of sweat up to their ankles, some to their knees, some to their waist, some to their shoulders. Some people are drowned in it. Based on the wrong that you have done, humankind panic and the fear is immense and the heat is unbearable and the sweat is covering people. They say, oh people, you see our situation, you know our calamity, you know what has befallen us. Let's go find someone to intercede on our behalf. So they say, let's go to our father, Adam. So they go to Adam alayhi salam. And they say, Ya Adam, you are Allah's first creation. Please tell him to start the day of judgment. We can't take the weight anymore. And Adam says, no. Allah is so angry today. He's never been this angry before. I made a sin. I ate from the tree. And so they will all go to Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh, you are the longest prophets. Please tell Allah just to start the day of judgment. And Nuh will say, no, no, no. Allah is so angry today. And I asked him something I shouldn't have. And they will go to Musa and Ibrahim, Isa alayhi salam. And Isa will tell them, why are you going to us? Go to the one who can help you. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa A mercy to mankind. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Ana laha, ana laha. I'll do it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes up to the throne of Allah and makes sujood. And praises Allah for things that no human has ever praised him for before. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Muhammad, put your head up. Put your head up. Ask and I'll give you. He says, Ya Allah, what about my ummah? What are you going to do with them? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, don't worry Muhammad. I won't disappoint you today. And the Prophet sallallahu says, Ya Allah, start the day of judgment. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, I will come and start the reckoning. The day where the angels start to pour down. So angels come down from the heavens, row after row, formation after formation, group after group, on this plain land. Such grand creation, so grand that humankind are mesmerized by them. So they say, ah, these are Lord. So the angels say, no, he will come in a manner befitting his majesty. At that moment, the hardest part, the hardest part of the hereafter, the coming of hellfire. It is a roaring, raging beast that is held down by 70,000 chains. Holding each chain is 70,000 angels. There is no scene more terrifying on the Day of Judgment than that scene. And when hellfire comes, brothers and sisters, every creation of Allah, they will fall to their knees. All they are saying is, Oh Allah, protect us. Oh Allah, protect us. And mankind move towards the land where they will stand before Allah Rabbul Izzah and will be made accountable for their deeds. Their books start to appear and their books are given to them and they will be lined up one line. There isn't a word being uttered. The first utterance in the Day of Judgment is from Allah Rabbul Izzah to our father Adam alayhi salam. And he says, Ya Adam, separate the portion of hell from your children. So he says, and what is the portion of hell? So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, from every thousand, nine hundred and ninety-nine for the fire. The scale will be put. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the first Ummah to get judged. What will happen? is the Prophet ﷺ will lead us to the throne. And all the creation of Allah, they're looking and they're saying, who are these people? And you're walking heads high, the judgment will start.